Hey, and welcome back to Open for Views. Uh, last time we opened Warhammer Crypt Hunters, which I'm sure some of you know was developed by Games Workshop. Uh, and they're based over in the UK, and while I am not opening another Games Workshop title today, I am opening something from the UK, and it just happens to be Gunpowder Studios' Bag of Dungeon. I'm really excited about this tile laying game. I really like these. Create your own kind of labyrinth-esque stage. Let's actually, let's read, before we open it, let's read the back of the box. Bag of Dungeon is a tabletop game of fantasy adventuring, exploring, fighting monsters, and stealing treasure. How rude. Using a simple-to-play tile laying system, one to four, I like simple. I like simple. I don't like these overly convoluted rules where, you know, you've got some guy who's jumping across the table to, like, be his, like, basically board game lawyer and tell you that he's suing you in board game court. Using a simple-to-play tile laying system, one to four players send their brave adventurers into the unknown to explore a deadly dungeon in a race to find the Ring of Creation and escape with their lives and their loot. It's not your loot. It's the, it's, that loot belongs to the, the Lich King. It belongs to the Wraith. It belongs to the Skeleton Warrior. It belongs to the, the Lord Lizard Man, uh, the, the goblins and, and slime guys, right? I mean, it's, it's their property, and you're taking it. It's rude. Play classic dungeon adventurers, elves, dwarves, fighters, and healers. Find magical items, potions, and weapons to help you in your quest. Work cooperatively to defeat the dungeon together, or turn on your friends to make fame and fortune yours alone. Be a scumbag. That's cool. Let's open it up. Let's open. Let's open it up like they uh, they opened up the can of dog food in Family Dog, where it just slides out. It worked. Oh, I like this. The five dragon heads. It must mean something. There's five of them, and there's five on five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Ooh, it means something. There's twenty dragon heads. Here's the tiles. We got some. Uh, looks like some effects, some tile effects. We have some. Equipment, teleport crystal. Move up to five tiles or through one adjacent wall. No clipping. Acme insurance, keep items on defeat. Imp's teeth, swap places with another adventurer. Falling rocks trap, 1d6 damage to all on tile. Rusty armor, one fight, one use, one damage. Or negative one damage, rather. That's cool, it falls apart. Steel armor, minus one damage. Magic armor, minus two. Magic boots, plus one tile move. Take no damage when escaping. Spear trap. Cool, man. This is going to be good. Oh, and here's the back of the... I don't know if I showed that already. If I did, whoops. Let's opt. I know what I'm having later is a stack of silica sandwich. That's going to be tasty. We have a bag. Everything's wood. Nice. We have a bag of meeples and some... Uh, counters and then we're going to do our dice game there's the dice let's oh here's some cards we have cards they're in a they're in a they're not once again we can't play our game but we can slide this off Ooh. bag of dungeon the first scroll siren song it's a dragon scroll are all of them dragon scrolls yes they are well, it's like a prompt. The Siren Sisters draw you to their song. You are enchanted by their bewitching melody. It seems to say, Come to me, weary adventurer, and let me comfort you. Who's going to fall for that? You're in a dungeon. Yeah, people fall for a lot of stuff in the dungeons. Mimics. Got some character cards. Let's slide that off. Slide off the garter belt. Let's see, we have a fighter. Let's see. Oh, what a... excellent. Male, female fighter. And they have names. The male is Cirrus. And the lady 
is Tamara, or Tamara. See ya, Tamara. Durek, the dwarf. Maria, the dwarfette. Tarak, the healer. And a real, you know, I could, the, the other healer, I could make a keeping it real joke, but. And we have Galhorn, the elf, and Alendra. I guess Alendra's the lady. I don't know, it's an elf. You really can't, like, because that could be, you feel me? Dead. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> just just so you know that when your your health reaches this point down here you're dead uh, we have the ah before we go through the rule book we have to go through this we have to go through our bag of monsters i wonder if there's monster tiles i'm gonna have to open that i'm going to have to open the yeah i have to i have to open the tiles tonight so you can see what it entails and so I want to see it too. We have a items bag. Bag of items. That's what they should have they should have, they should have just called it bag of items. Bag of monsters. And not the better name, bag of dungeon. This is like bag of dice. I guess that's the play. Let's see here. Let's check out this manual really quick before we... Well, let's see. Should we go through the manual? All right. I gotta like the back of that. The crypt. It reminds me of those old, uh, like, first-person dungeon crawlers, like Wizardry. You know? Or uh, what was the, those ones that came out on the, uh, the DS, the Nintendo DS... Uh, Etrian Odyssey. Those are cool. The little you make the little map at the bottom. It was almost like when you would when you play the old games, the well, old dungeon crawlers. You'd have your graph paper. I really like that idea. That's cool. Do we open these? Let's let's say let's you know what? I think this is. Yeah, let's go ahead and open. Let's check out some monsters. I'm imagining they're gonna be. Like, probably, pretty, pretty, you know, as the characters are fairly nondescript, you know, they're letting your imagination fill in the spaces, which I believe is a good thing. Ooh, good sound. Ooh. Tile number one is M2, M3, M6, M7, M9. That's the one everybody saw before. And now we have blank tiles, and we have some other stuff. We have a torch. Ooh, lay two tiles for one AP. Steel sword, bow, poison darts trap. Ice staff, health potion, small axe, magic shield. This is going to be righteous. Oh, the exit. I win. There's the monsters. Oh, my goodness. We have a tornado, morning star, dragon lance, range, a loyal bear. Wait a minute. 1d6 to the combat roll. I guess CBT means uh, combat. Remove undefeat. Using no, uses no inventory space, so he's like a uh, an instant auto damage bear. That's cool. Ah, here are, and they did. I believe they did an excellent job. See, it leaves just enough to the imagination. You have a nice silhouette. You know what it is. So what do we have? We have goblins, zombies. What's this guy? A mummy. Mummy. More mummies. Skeleton. See, these are who you're stealing from. What's this guy? Mud monster. Werewolf. Mirror monster. Oh, that's creepy. Check these out. Look at those. 
a mirror monster. That's yeesh. What a troll. A monk. What's this guy? Minotaur. Looks like a boss. A giant snake. And then the Reacher. Oh, I'll show the Reacher. I'll be nice. I'll show the Reacher. Reacher's kind of creepy. And then the last set of tiles. Start. I know I've shown this a bunch, but I really like the back of those tiles. The dragon, dragon, hey, gotta mean something, guys. Gotta mean something. It's a code. Let's put these. Oh man, I, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna play tonight, and I'll tell you how it goes tomorrow. Let's see here. Yeah, this is gonna be cool. But yeah. So I mean, we we literally just went through everything, and you know there wasn't much to. I didn't go through everything because I made the decision. I'm over here. I'm skipping a step. What would an episode of Open for Views be without me horribly reading the manual? <laughs> it's time. Bag of Dungeon, a fantasy adventure game for one to four players by Gunpowder Studios. Rules. Welcome to the dungeon. Is that supposed to be like a you like Guns N' Roses reference? If this is your first adventure, we suggest you begin with the standard rules, then introduce the advanced rules when you're ready for more magic and mayhem. I don't know if I can handle both of those. I can handle magic, I can handle mayhem. But magic and mayhem? Standard rules. Object of the game. You play adventurers entering a magical dungeon to find and steal. There it is, again. The Ring of Creation. Monsters, traps, items, and treasure await. And the fearsome red dragon guards the exit. Your quest, get in, get the ring, and get out. The dungeon collapses once the ring leaves the exit. Adventurers still inside have one turn to escape or are lost forever in the ruins. That's a cool, that's a cool concept. I like that. Move. Setup. Place the start dungeon tile in the center of your play area. Set aside the exit tile. Shuffle the rest of the dungeon tiles and split them into two equal stacks. Shuffle the exit tile into one of the stacks and place that stack beneath the other to form a single face-down draw stack. Each player chooses a, a character card, an adventure meeple, and four cubes. 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 They're not counters. They're cubes. Place your adventure on the start title. Place a cube on the highest numbered health space of your character card, one of the three space of your lives track, and one of the highest numbered AP space. You'll use the other cube to track monster health during the fight, using action points. The bravest player goes first. On your turn, you will spend the action points APs. Advanced placements. On your character card to move your adventurer. Draw and lay dungeon tiles. You I use items and fight. Move your cube down your APs track as you spend them. It costs one AP to move one space or lay a new dungeon tile. Using some items cost one or more APs. See item text. And we already read those. Not all of them, just some of them. You can spend APs in any combination of actions. For example, you could draw and place a dungeon tile, one AP. Move your character one tile, one AP. Draw and place another dungeon tile, one AP. And shoot a fireball at a monster, two AP. And so on until you've spent all of your APs or enter a fight. And you steal. You don't have to spend all of your APs, but they cannot be carried over to your next turn. Oh. Your APs are reset to full at the end of your turn. Your turn always ends after a fight even if you have AP remaining. Building the dungeon. Dungeon tiles are laid adjacent to your adventure. Place them so that an opening edge joins another, forming a logical path. No match, you are lost. Return the tile face down under the stack and end your turn. 
spawning and fighting monsters. When you lay an M tile, ah, that's what those M, M, M. I don't know what I thought it meant, but I, yeah, it makes sense, monster. See the M3 tile above. Ooh, ooh nice. Place a red slash black token. Red and black token. Is it red, or red slash black? Is that what it's getting at? I see the red ones. I see the black ones. Let me see where are we at. Yeah, place the red black token. Choose either side, so it's the other side. Silly me, getting ahead of my yeah. There we go. See red, and then black. Getting all mad about nothing. That's me. To show there is a monster there, you place the tile on the, or you place the little, uh, the token on a tile to show a monster is there. When your adventurer lands on an M tile with a token, draw a monster from the monster bag and place it face up. This is the monster bag. You put all the monsters in here in this bag. You bag the monsters. Replacing the token. Monsters spawn once for each M tile drawn. Do not draw another monster if you move there again. When you lay the exit, Tile M12, place the red dragon tile there. And that's what this guy is. Okay, so he's like the boss tile. I play this guy. Melee hand to hand combat happens when opponents are on the same tile. APs are not required for melee combat unless specified by an item. You cannot use ranged weapons, a bow, when fighting an opponent on the same tile. Before any combat round, if you have AP left, you can escape. Or tag another adventurer to help you. Fight. Roll the number of combat dice shown on your character card. Add weapons or item modifiers. Get another player to roll for the monster. Or do it yourself if you're playing solo, I imagine. You get some bring. So you're playing solo. You got to get bring. You got another player to roll your dice. Hey, come here. Hire some guy. Go to the grocery store. Hey, I need you to roll some dice. Give you five bucks. Come over and play. Damage. The lower scoring opponent takes damage equal to the score difference. Reduce its health by that number. For example, you score nine, the monster scores five, so the monster takes four damage. Ah, nice and simple. Slug it out. Repeat. Five one to five two until one opponent is killed. Its health reaches zero or you escape. Critical hits. Ooh. If all your dice rolls are identical, two sixes, two or three fours, you score a critical hit. Double your score and add modifiers. Monsters cannot score critical hits. Escape. Before any combat round, you may go back or go past to an existing tile, spend one AP or take and take one damage, or go past and lay a new tile, two APs, two damage. Damage is direct. Armor and shields do not protect you. That's good to know. If you win a fight. If. If. If you hurt you. you if. You gain items as a reward. If the monster started with health 6 to 9, take one item from the item bag. If it started with health above 10, take two. Ooh, you steal two items from its corpse. Place items on an inventory space on your character card face down if you want to hide them from other players. So I guess that's, uh, let me see. There's your APs, lives, health. If you lose a fight, your adventurer loses a life and your turn is over. If this is your last life, your adventure is also over. Otherwise, return to the start tile and reset your health to full. Place all of your items, including the ring if you have it, on the tile where you died. Ah, so someone can come and snatch it. These can now be picked up, exactly, these can now be picked up by any adventurer on their turn if the tile is free of monsters. If you are defeated by the Red Dragon, your items are magically transported to the healing pool. If the healing pool has not been drawn, place items to one side until it appears, and then place them. Monsters regenerating health. Tagging of this, I'm interested in this tagging other adventurers thing. 
You can spend one AP during a fight to call one nearby adventurer to help you, provided they had enough AP available to reach your tile. If the player agrees, which they do not declare until after you've spent the AP, oh boy, <laughs> they spend APs to reach you, become your tag partner, and add one dice to your combat roll. The tag partner does not reset their APs after the fight. They now have fewer APs to their next turn. When you take damage, your tag partner takes half damage, rounded down. The dwarf takes seven points of damage, so its tag partner, the elf, takes three. Adventures cannot escape during a tagged fight. You get the items if you win, though you may choose the reward your tag partner. You, you, can, you can give them a gift. You can be very nice. Oh, here, here, thanks for helping me. If you lose the fight, the monster will attack the tag partner and now inflicts full damage. The tag partner can spend APs if they have them to use items and may now escape. Ranged combat. Spells and potion. You can shoot... Whoa, 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 whoa. I see, this is what I'm interested in this. You can shoot unrevealed monsters. Once you have fired, draw a monster tile from the bag and place it face up, replacing a token. Deduct the damage result from its health and continue your turn. Fire again or move to the monster's tile and fight. If you don't manage to kill the monster by the end of your turn, its health returns to full. You can hold as many items as you have inventory spaces on your character card. Adventures on the same tile can trade items freely. And when tagging, that's neat. You may also drop unwinded items on your current tile. If a space on your character card has a symbol, you can only place items here that show the same symbol. For example, you cannot put a shield in the armor space, and only boots can go in the boot space. You can store any item in an unmarked box. You can switch items at no AP cost, even in a fight. Special. Here we go. Special section. A special healing pool. Once placed, let's see, now we're going to learn about the healing pool. Once placed, put one token on the healing pool for each adventurer still in the game to use end your turn on the healing pool. Remove a token from the tile and reset your health to full. The healing pool is empty when all its tokens have been removed. An adventurer may use the healing pool as many times as there are tokens remaining. Item tiles. These are single-use tiles. Whoever reaches out first draws one item. Traps. When a trap is drawn, all adventurers on that tile suffer its effect. Hence the, the, uh, the poison darts and all that stuff I was talking about earlier. Chests only affect the exception. This is the exception. Chests only affect the... Uh, adventurer who opened it. When does the ring appear? Whoever lays the last dungeon tile from the stack rolls two dice and places the ring of creation on that tile. E.g. roll nine, ring is placed on M9. The exit is now sealed shut and can only be opened by an adventurer holding the ring on the exit tile. I'm guessing this is the ring in the dice bag, which I didn't show long enough, but I mean, what can I do? Once the ring bearer has exited the dungeon, those still inside have one turn to escape before the dungeon collapses. The ring spawns a defender. If there is no monster on the tile where the ring appears, place a token on the ring, then replace it with a monster when an adventurer lands on that tile, defeating the red dragon. Red dragon has 20 health and he has four combat dice. And what is he immune to? He's immune to arrows, so he cannot be shot from a distance. The red dragon does not move from the exit tile. There's solo rules. Oh, it's telling you, okay, if the solo game you choose to send up four adventurers into the dungeon, but each only gets one life. For a tough challenge, try sending just one adventurer against the Red Dragon and her minions. You can choose to remove the following tiles from the game before you play. Vampire Teeth, Sorcerer's Skull, Imp's Teeth, Witch's Claw, Magic Vine, and Acme Insurance Scroll. If you prefer, you can also discard them as you play and draw again. So you can this just house rules. Tagging to rest tagging during a solo game oh my goodness i was just joking are they really going to tell us to go hire someone at the grocery store when playing solo with multiple adventures an adventurer can all try to tag another the adventurer being tagged must have at least five health otherwise they are too weak to help roll a dice on a roll of three to six the adventurer becomes your tag partner if you roll a one or two they refuse to assist for that fight advanced rules competitive game escape defeat Monster Rush.
After you perform a ranged attack on a monster, it will charge towards you. If it is unrevealed, replace the token with a monster tile. Reveal it and deduct the damage result from its health. If the monster is still alive, roll one dice and move it that many spaces towards your tile. That's sweet. Adventurers in the way. If a monster charges past one or more adventurers, it inflicts one dice of instant damage to each adventurer it passes. If its movement ends on a tile where there are adventurers, each takes one dice of instant damage, and the active adventurer may then continue their turn if they have APs remaining. Or play passes to the next. Fred's Lucky Dip Stall? Fred the Gnome... Fred the Gnome, local postal operative and regular at the Wasted Wizard Tavern, has a license to trade lost property in the dungeon exchange for dead monster tokens. We have no idea what he does with the tokens, but we suspect he claims them as his own kills in order to impress other gnomes and get dates. <laughs> at the start of the game, place a token, and that's something else I like. I like, I like, uh, I like games that don't take themselves too, too terribly seriously. Good. It's good for these guys. Good for Gunpowder Studios. At the start of the game, place a token on the start tile. Fred won't bring his goods into the dungeon. This is the location of Fred's lucky dip stall. When you move onto this tile, you may discard three dead monster tokens or two items to draw one item from the items bag. There is no AP cost to do this. Fred has no idea what's in his lucky dip and does not offer refunds or exchanges if you get something you don't want. A trap, which will activate. If the item you draw is of no use, you may put it back in the items bag or keep it to trade with another adventurer. I guess there's like a little rule, like a house rule, you like trade blind, you know, kind of bluff. <laughs> I've got this really nice tile, but I'm looking for a potion. Dragon Scrolls. The Dragon Scrolls are 11 further adventures that add new quests, enemies, and treasure to Bag of Dungeon. Pick a card, pick a character, pick a fight. Credits. Tim Sharville is the grand creator, rules wizard, Russ Law, keeper of words, Paul Sharville, and guardian of the coin, Mick the Monk. Very cool. I'm going to have a good time playing this. So maybe I'll do a, um, maybe I'll do a let's play of this. This seems like really, really up my alley. And, uh, as I said last time, if, uh, if you have any recommendations for anything, not just Warhammer, not just fantasy, if there's just any other type of uh, board game, or game in general that you'd like to see me talk about, maybe do a little bit of, uh, of terrible reading, uh, I'll do it. Just, uh, yeah, comment down below and all that fun stuff. And, yeah, that's really all I can think to say right now. So, you all have a nice day, and, yeah, take it easy.